Well, it's week nine of the LCS with coverage brought to you by Alienware. I'm joined right now by Jensen after an unfortunate loss to Cloud9. Perks immediately afterwards tweeted, I love playing TF against Team Liquid. Uh, I don't know if you have any strong feelings about that statement. Fantastic TF performance. Okay. <laughs> glad glad uh, you have that. Okay. I think uh, this is the one-year anniversary. Week 9, I think it was, of last year. You said uh, that you thought, was it TSM isn't that good or Bjergsen's not that good? Or both? Uh, right before playoffs. Do you remember? Oh. Oh, so this is your way of like trying to see if I'm talking. Yeah, to you yeah. So that. I'm trying to see. I'm like, what do you got for uh, me this year? Because that was great. Because it really helped. Yeah, yeah. The playoffs no, narratives. I, I don't remember exactly what I said, but it did cause a lot of yes. controversy. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, but um, anything new? Hmm, let me think. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, okay, hot takes. Eg think... Jazuke. You know, people are saying Eg is really good. Do you think Jazuke is good or is he overrated? Well, he's he's okay. Okay. Um, I mean, he's 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 a good individual player, but he's he he gets a bit lost for sure. Um, but I don't know if there was any hot takes. I think right now every team is pretty fucking bad, and anyone could really win the playoffs. I don't think there's like any clear winner or any team that really stands out too much. I think all the like top teams, like I'd say probably top five, you know, us. TSM, C9, 100 Thieves, and EG. I guess it's five teams. Yeah. You could really win it. I don't think that's like a clear favorite, but yeah, I don't know. I, I guess that this is kind of exciting in a sense because anything could happen, at least in my head. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like that's what a lot of people are saying. Do you still have as much faith in 100T? Because I feel like some people have been losing faith in them recently. They feel like they're not as good. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, they had like a really strong... Early summer split, I guess. Um, I personally thought they weren't as good as the results were saying, um, and people thought they were, you know, like really fucking good. Like Abadaga is so fucking good, but it, to me, it, it it was never really like that. Um, they they obviously looked better than Spring Split, but I think every other team was just a lot worse. Um, and Hundred Thieves had a bit of an edge, but yeah, I I don't think they are like a super good team. Um, they are they are a good team though. Like they they could for sure win it, but they are not like better than other teams yeah. right now at least. Yeah. Okay, so you you were you're not super sold on Juzuki, you're not super sold sold on Abadage. Who do you think has been a good mid laner this year? Uh, you know, I I I know no offense to you, but I think obviously TL has been struggling, so maybe it's it's been tougher for you to look as good as you have in the past. Like it's an interesting situation where I don't. I don't feel like there's a super standout in the mid lane position, especially when you talk about, you know, all the mid laners in those top five teams that you just you just referenced. Yeah, I mean, I think mid lane as a whole has just looked pretty bad this split. Um, you know, from game to game, some mid laners stand out, right? Um, but there hasn't, you know, been like a clear, like this this mid laner is so fucking good, he's better than the rest. I'd, I'd say it's like been very mixed. Like sometimes. You know, like, Tsuke has some good games, but he also has some bad games. Um, you know, same with Abidage. And then, you know, Pav Evil is generally consistent when he's on control mages uh, and so forth. So it's it's been a mess. Um, yeah, there's not, there, there hasn't, at least in my head, been any, like, consistently good performing mid laner this split, at least. Um, at least as far as I can remember. Um, yeah, but it's, it's been it's been fun. Okay, so you say everyone's bad. Is there just a chance that everyone's good? Because there's this narrative. Uh, so I talked to Peter Dunn yesterday, who is the the coach of EG, and he feels like there's this like battle for the soul of what LCS is between the old school big three, like you guys in no. TSMC9, and then EG and Hunter T. Because his argument is like Hunter T and EG – uh, and maybe even to a lesser extent, some of the other teams have been trying to force these like really aggressive aggro battle st uh, style games. You know, maybe like what we saw with this TSM dig game today, um, where whereas he was kind of pointing and saying like you know TL, you know other teams like that maybe TSM still playing this very methodical like slow way that you guys have. You know, I think we were talking about this last year. Maybe we've talked about it even before then. 
So I'm I'm kind of curious. Do you see that? Do you feel like there's a chance that like perhaps everything's inconsistent because there's just more chaos? But perhaps that might be good for the league as we look to international stuff because obviously you know regions like LPL play a lot more uh, fighty. Um, I mean, I can I can speak for us as a team. We used to be really passive at least last year, but I think at least to my knowledge, most of our early games are really fucking good. Um, we usually get dives going in the early game and tend to get a lot of leads. Now I, I haven't looked at the stats to see like how good our early game actually is, but but I feel like most of the time we actually have really good early games where we make stuff happen, but then we tend to play more controlled later on. Whereas you know a team like EG, they just like to play fast, fast, and fast all the time, right? Um, but I mean that wasn't really the case when we played against them um, Saturday, right? Like we played against EG, it was relatively slow game, very controlled, and they couldn't really get anything done. Um, even though they did play a snowball comp, they they failed to snowball, right? Um, I, I don't know if I'd say like EG is like pushing for these like snowball comps and pushing NA as a region with more ag aggression or anything like that. Uh, I, I don't really see it. I mean, I, I think as a whole, NA is playing more proactive, at least in the, the laning phase. Um, there's been a lot more dives happening just just overall. Like, so so that's that's been an improvement, I'd say. But I'd say like just overall when it comes to like mid game and late game um, play. It, it hasn't been better this year compared to last year. Um, so it's been a bit disappointing. Um, but but we have made progression in the early game as a region, in my opinion. So who knows? Maybe maybe NA will win Worlds. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. That was the hot take I was looking for. So I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay, you we'll just it leave it there. You. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm purposely trying not to talk too much about Worlds too early this year because I just feel like better to focus on uh, domestic stuff and then see what comes whenever we get to the international stage. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so, but back to back to the point, you, you still think that uh, the inconsistencies that we've seen in the LCS is, a, is just a sign that we are not playing particularly well or like a lot of the teams are not playing well. Even though, from my understanding, I, I think a lot of the other regions have also had kind of wild inconsistencies. Like even in LEC yeah. right now, I know that they have like, a similar situation where there's like five teams that could all, that are all considered yeah. pretty good. Yeah, that that's actually a good point because I do think when I watch the other regions too, there is no like clear like favorite for Worlds. I think every team is is playing not particularly clean. I don't know. Maybe it's just the meta that the games are a lot more messy. But um, I do think there's not like a clear region that stands out. That or, or like NA looks a lot worse than the other regions, um, but but just from playing, it, it does feel like the games aren't going. I, I don't I don't want to use the word word scripted, but like as you know, clean as you'd want it to be. Yeah, um, maybe less strategic. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. Um, but but you know, it's maybe it's just a phase, right? You know, maybe come playoffs, the teams will will level up. Who who knows really? Um, but yeah, like I said, it feels like all teams, or at least like all the top five teams, are kind of like uh, around the same skill level, at least. And I think all teams can can only get better um, come playoffs. So yeah. we'll have to see what happens. So you mentioned leveling up. Clearly, uh, speaking speaking of that, TL, I think, has looked better this week. And even with the loss today, I think a lot of people are like, whoa, Santor's back. And wow, things feel so different. So I guess I would ask, how much of that is Santorin returning to the team? Um, yeah, I mean, he's obviously a super experienced player. Um, I think with Amal, we were definitely struggling in a lot of areas, um, especially on stage. Um, our scrims were going pretty well with Amal, but we just couldn't really seem to replicate the same performance on stage as much. Um, so... It has helped a lot for me, at least, to get Santorin back because I feel like we are on the same page a lot more and understand each other better. Um, you know, that's not like you know, it's not like Amal is a bad player or anything. I right. think I think he's actually like uh, pretty talented, but it was just hard to like fully, I guess, synergize with him as much. And you know, like it's it's also easier for like players who you haven't played with as much to kind of just play their own way. Um, you don't want to change them too much. Um, 
I think that that could actually be more harmful than beneficial if if it's not like a long term solution. Um, but yeah, I, th I think we're more on the same page with Centaurin when it comes to to just playing the game and and macro lane assignments, all that kind of things. So it's been better. I mean, we obviously did lose to C9, but I think we are on the right trajectory. He also hasn't, you know, something to keep in mind is he hasn't really played much solo queue and he's just, you know, getting back into, I guess, League of Legends. He said, he said scrims for the first time with you guys this week. Yeah, yeah. And even, you know, prior to that, he didn't really play solo queue for like a couple of weeks at all. So he's just getting back into to the pit to... What, what do you call that? The swing back of things? The, the, frank, the swing of things. That was the yes. word Thrace I was looking for. Yeah. Um, so we, we still have some work to do, I guess, and just getting used to playing with him again. But um, yeah, I mean, so far so good. I'd say even though we lost to C9, I think we are on the right path. And I'm confident that we will be in a good spot um, for next week's playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Does it take... I mean, I, it's an interesting situation because you guys and C9, I think, as well, both had just kind of like these really messy summer splits. And I think in a lot of situations, teams like uh, they tend to struggle in those moments, right? Like they start losing some games. They start to lose sort of confidence. You seem very confident. Is that, do you think it's just like the veteran ship in you? Like how long you've been playing that you're like, oh yeah, we're going to be okay. Cause normally it feels like the teams that struggle don't tend to bounce back out of that. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I've always been very confident when it comes to playing on stage. If I feel like, you know, I know I haven't had the best regular season myself. I've had my fair share of mistakes, but I know I know those mistakes are very easily fixable. So I'm by no means concerned. And I, I think, you know, this team has a lot of potential. The only question is whether we can, you know, show it or not. But, you know, in the past, you know, like even 2019 with, the other TL roster, like we had, you know, like 20% win rate in scrims and we still won finals, right? So to me, even if things aren't going the best, you can, anything can really happen as long as you're playing well. And I, I at least know that I will show up when it matters. So I, I'm very confident in my own play at least. Yeah, very good. Uh, well, is there anything you would like to say to any of the fans out there? Um, I guess thank you guys for supporting and... It's been a tough regular season, but as I just mentioned, I'm confident. And yeah, thanks for cheering for me and, and the squad. Very good. Well, thank you, Jensen, for the interview. Looking forward to see what the teams or the team can bring in playoffs. And for everyone else, you can check out the rest of my coverage of all things LCS right here on my YouTube channel. Playoffs are coming. Oh, my gosh. Playoffs are coming. I am so excited for this, and I hope you are too, because it's when we get to see the just maximum levels of competition in the LCS and these best of fives. And you know what else allows for maximum competition? You play on an Alienware setup, get an Alienware notebook, desktop, monitor, maybe some of their accessories. Alienware.com slash Travis. There's a link in the description below, and there's a code that you can use. And uh, they've lifted some of the restrictions that unfortunately were on that, that code for a little bit. So you should be able to apply it to even more uh, systems and setups now. So go do that. Check out the code. And then while we're talking about competition, compete against the other people that watch this video by subscribing to the channel. Those names are scrolling across the bottom of the screen if everything went well. Bye.